What's up, Yu-Gi-Oh fans? Oh, that's spicy here. So a couple weeks ago, I uploaded my Great Keepers deck profile, and then the ban list dropped, and we got a lot to talk about. So I'm just gonna show you what I got and what changes we've made. And I actually finished deck is now a lot better than it was, and I've played tested an awful lot, and I really enjoy playing it. So to start, we got our three Great Keepers Commandant. So Commandant is the one we discarded from your hand at a Necro Valley. Pretty decent. For your opening hands. Great Keeper Spiritualist. Basically, when Spiritualist is on the field and Necro Valley is on the field, you can fusion some one spell cast fusion monster from your extra deck using this card you control and want and other monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. So obviously we use that to get into our supernaturalist. Then we got three of the Great Keeper Headman. So Great Keeper's Headman. If this card is summoned, you can target one level four Great Keeper's monster in your graveyard. Special summon attack, a position, or face down defense position. You can only use this effect once per turn, and it's unaffected by Necromatic. So summon it, get Spiritualist, and boom, you got a Supernaturalist. Then we got three of the Great Keeper's Recruiter. Great Keeper's Recruiter used to be quite expensive, and because of the speed duels, this card is now really cheap. In this card, you control the sent to the graveyard. Add one Great Keeper's Monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty slow, but it's kind of, you know, it's super basic stuff. One Great Keeper's Descendant and one Great Keeper's Heretic. So, Great Keeper's Descendant, you contribute one other face of Great Keeper's Monster. You target uh, two target, one card your prone controls, just try to target. If this card's on the field, it's unaffected by all card effects, as long as Necro Valley is on the field. Which is annoying because it dodges Necro Valley's power boost, but whatever. So, that is the Great Keeper lineup. And then, my little choice that I like to run is the Eater of Millions. Eater Millions pairs really well with our Pot of Extravagance. So, Eater Millions basically, it must be special summoned from your hand by banishing five or more cards from your hand, field, or extra deck, face down. This card gains 100 attack and defense for each face down banished card. This card cannot be tributed or used as material for fusion, synchro, XC. Can be used for links. Fun fact. Once per turn, the start of damage step. If this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish the opponent's monster face down. So this card basically is just crazy to put up against whatever because your opponent has to be wary about attacking it and also you can just attack right into it because it's before the damage step, you just don't take any damage and it's just crazy. So I like to run two either minions. Sometimes I think I could do it three, but then I want to stick to kind of 40 cards and I don't really want to take some of this stuff out. Three Ash Blossom, Joy Spring, probably is the only hand traps we got. I, it's, Tempting to increase the numbers, but until the meta sort of lines up, we'll just run with three ash as is the most versatile. Onto the spells, you got our baby card Necro Valley. This is the card of the deck. It's Great Keepers. You need Necro Valley. So basically, this is on like how many erratas? This is like seventh or water. You know, I don't know. I don't have the most up to date one. I have the uh, Legendary Collection Yugi's World ones. Basically, it's the same stuff. All Great Keepers Monsters gain 500 attack and defense. Cards in Evil Player's Graveyard cannot be banished, but basically what it means is cards in the graveyard cannot be moved, because this one also says negate any effect of the moving card. Also, now it says something like the attributes and the types can't be affected as well, uh, can't be changed, which is for cards like Zombie World and stuff. So Necrobite basically just means don't use the graveyard at all. Then I run Three of the Throne. Why would you run Three of the Throne? It is your Searcher. It is your Rhoda. It is... Necro Valley Throne. Add one Great Keeper Monster from your deck to your hand. There we go. The other effect basically is immediately after this card resolves normal summon one Great Keeper Monster. Whatever. It is alright, but you don't use it for that. You want to search. And yes, I don't have this card yet. I don't really want to have to go out and pay stupid money for a playset of Pot of Extravagance. If you can afford it, run it. Please, it is great for this deck. If you can't afford it, I don't know, desire it. We could do is desires, but I don't like to. Card of Demise, Pot of Duality, something along those lines. But yeah, Pot of Extravagance. If you can run it, please just run whatever. Three of these. Again, it pairs really well with Eater Millions. Banish six face down, Eater gains another 600 attack. It is pretty cool. Then, a card we got back from the ban list. Two. Royal Tributes. Royal Tribute is crazy. If you control Necro Valley, both players discard any monsters in their hand. Now, this one is a much older version. 
Basically, this one says, this card can only be activated when your Necro Valley is active on the field. Both players must discard all monster cards in the hand to the graveyard. I prefer this one's the shot attacks, you know, if you control Necro Valley, both players discard many monsters. Also, I'd like to run one Super Polymerization. So, I'm gonna tell you now, I side the other two. Super Poly's now three, it's crazy. The reason I don't wanna run three in the main deck anyway, is because sometimes it is a dead draw. Your opponent could be playing a deck that's completely irrelevant when it comes down to your super polymerization and you then don't wanna have to brick on it. If you know you're going into game two and your opponent is basically a sit and duck for a super poly, run that at three. It is simple, you gotta do it. Now onto the other Necro Valley Green Cube cards. One, Hidden Temple's Necro Valley. One Great Cube is Steely and Alpha the Traps and Imperial Tombs of Necro Valley. So the reasoning for these, pretty simple. I don't really want to see any more of what we got here. One of each is fine. Hidden Temple's Necro Valley. Activate only if you control Great Cube Monster and Necro Valley or on the field. Hidden Temple's Necro Valley. Activate only if both Great Cube Monster and Necro Valley are on the field. Neither player can special summon monsters except Great Cube Monsters. If either a Great Cube Monster or Necro Valley is on the field, isn't on the field, destroy this card. Steely, target two Great Cube Monsters in your graveyard, add those targets to your hand, and it can be negated by Necro Valley, and Tombs, when a spell or trap or monster effect is activated, while both a Great Cube Monster and Necro Valley are on the field, negate the activation if you do destroy it. So, this basically is like a Solemn Strike, which is kind of, you know, whatever, but you don't have to pay the, the uh, life points. The reason I don't want to have to pay the 15 for a strike is because we now got this at three. Solemn Judgment. So you pay half your life points and pretty much negate everything. So Solemn Judgment 3 kind of put me out of using Strike, which is why I just run the Tombs. I don't really like Tombs because you are basically bricking to hell if you don't have a Necro Valley or whatever. Especially now that people are maining Spell and Trap Disruption. And now, because I am a little bitch, one Terraforming, one Metaverse. Both good cards to search on Necro Valley, but we like to use it to search this one Mystic Mine. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Wow, whatever. I don't care. So, again, these cards, good if you want to search Necro Valley. If you draw in a Mystic Mine, you can search Necro Valley, and you, when you want to, just get rid of the Mystic Mine by overlaying Necro Valley. If not, Mystic Mine is a, just a good stall card, because this deck doesn't does kind of lack the general pumping out the strong monsters, and... You know, normally the ending board is just like one supernaturalist and like a face down. So Mystic Mind, if you don't, you know, by that point, if you don't care much for Necro Valley, just Mystic Mind, boom, there we go. You can now do anything. Cheers. And yeah, I just like being a little bitch with Mystic Mind, and it really does work. Don't knock it until you try it. On to the extra deck. So obviously we run three of the supernaturalist. This card's crazy. Normally, you, it's, well, I'll just read the effect. Gain stack defense equal to the combined original levels of the materials used for its fusion times 100. So normally it's a three and a four, so seven. And plus, so you're already on like 32 by the time you then add Necro Valley. So it's normally anywhere between 32 and 33, which is pretty beefy. While Necro Valley is on the field, this card and any card in your field zone, basically Necro Valley, Cannot be destroyed by card effects. During your main phase, you can activate this effect. And during your end phase's turn, add one Great Cuber Monster or one Necro Valley card from your deck to your hand. So it's good, because if obviously if the Supernaturalist gets destroyed or whatever, you still get that search back. And it's at the end phase, and it's pretty cool. So that is pretty much that. Then Super Poly Targets, the Starving Venom Dragon is the two Dark Monsters. The Predator Planet at Dragostelia is the one fusion monster and one dark monster. The Diplexo Chimera. I like running this because it has two cybers and salmon grates. And I'd rather run this. It's more versatile than running the um, Violet Chimera. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't really care. I just, I think this is a better card to run. And because Pendulums are now a thing again, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. So yeah, one Odd Eyes monster, one Pendulum monster, it does come up, trust me. So it's worth having just for that backup if you need it. Lynx, the one Nightmare Cerberus, the one Nightmare Phoenix, and this kind of flips around between two of this or one of this and an Undercloth Taker. 
Wee Witch Apprentice. I've got two of those. But yeah, sometimes I take the other one out for an underclerk and then sometimes put it back in. I just can't decide what I want when it comes to that. And now I run three XE Frank 4 as a Time Free Doer and Abyss Dweller. And my buddy, number 41, Babuska, the Terabi Tire Tapir. Just generic rank four is, is just what it is. And that is that for the extra deck. And this time I have a side deck, whereas last time I didn't, it proves how much I've actually been trying to use this deck. So straight away, the cards I'm thinking of possibly putting in the main deck at some point is the three, a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. So, what can I say? Ghost Ogre is actually gonna become pretty good in this format. I mean, straight away, if strikers use Modi Roll and you use Ogre, that's kind of then done. Stop. You know, Ogre is just pretty nuts in this comp format. Then we got three of your Twin Twisters for the back row decks, but I also like to run the one Mystical Space Typhoon. So the reasoning for this is I couldn't think of any other one-off that I wanted to use. I mean, I went for like Angie Spell and Imperial Order and a lot of those cars, but I just settled. Screw it. Mystical Space Typhoon. That would do for me. Three Red Reboot for the Trap Heavy decks. Red Reboot is actually really awesome. It was between this and Impertinence, and I don't know. I just went Red Reboot, because I just feel this is going to be a more used card at the moment. And then your two Super Polys to go with the one that's in the main. Because Super Poly, again, I have quite a few targets for various situations. And now it's a three, why not run it? You know, in decks like this, it just is class. And my favorite card is the three evenly matched. So this card may not be as broken as it was in the last format. Evenly matched is still a good card. Just because people won't see you putting it in a Gravekeeper deck. And when you flip it, it is just a bitch to play against. And I like being that bitch in, when it comes to this deck. Especially running Mystic Mine. And I like th just the shock value for... Oh, I looked. I lose to a Great Keeper's deck that runs Mystic Mind because, yeah, I like to be that awkward. So, if you like the content I produce on this channel, deck profiles like this, pack openings, whatever, please feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. Like the videos, comment on the videos, and as always, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.